Hey there once again YouTube. I know it's been a little while since I have made a video, but I am back once again. Been kind of busy getting ready for our third child that is coming, which will be our second boy. Lucas Andrew Ferriolo will be due in early November, probably around November 1st or so. So just want to get that out of the way and let you guys know that I'm very busy lately. And uh, this weekend is Seafair Weekend here in Seattle. We are going on Saturday to see the Blue Angels and... You know, we kind of like the hydroplanes, but the air show is mainly what we go for. It's supposed to rain on Friday, so we decided to go on Saturday. So that's going to be fun. And next week, we are taking a trip to the Mount St. Helens Monument. We're going to go check out Mount St. Helens. It's about a three-hour drive from where we're at. Here, we're uh, just northeast of Seattle up here. So it's about a three-hour drive, but I think it'll definitely be worth it. Never gone there before. Kind of get some of these fun things out of the way before the baby comes. So, just letting you guys know, I'm going to be pretty busy, but I have been updating a few things. It's still on my website. It's going to take a while to completely update everything, but just check back here and there on my website. Certain areas will be updated and let you guys know when that stuff occurs. Just in the past 24 hours, we're seeing only seven earthquakes with the largest for Hawaii being at 3.0 at 6.9 kilometers in depth in between Kilauea and Mauna Loa. Now, uplift continues at the Mauna Loa Summit, the Kilauea Summit, and the Kilauea East Rift Zone. Uplift is still ongoing. We have seen some spasmodic tremor events in the past few weeks, which actually I did do a post on recently. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And here we are at my website under Seismic Blogs under Hawaii. And we do have my most recent post right here, which was on July 27, 2019. About the events, spasmodic tremor events between July 19th and 22nd and July 27th as well. I show the normal plots as usual for spasmodic tremor on those dates. And I also do show some, uh, some additional plots because you know, magnitude 3.0 events in Hawaii, of course they occur all the time. But in the past week or two, we have seen a notable increase in magnitude 3 and above earthquakes. And I do show the plots from the closest seismic stations for most of the recent magnitude 3 events at Kilauea and Mauna Loa, especially one did hit near Puuo. So go check out that uh, post if you guys wish. Now let's move on to one more thing. Here we are under Seismic Events under Steamboat Geyser 2019. This morning at about 7.21 a.m. Mountain Time, we did see another, yet another Steamboat Geyser eruption. So this most recent eruption is the 30th eruption of 2019 which is the 62nd eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Again, as I've stated before, June 2019, not July, but June, broke a record of its own where Steamboat erupted seven times, setting an all-time record for eruptions in one calendar month. Steamboat is still alive and well, and we only need three more eruptions to beat the all-time yearly record of 32 eruptions, which was achieved by Steamboat Geyser in 2018. If Steamboat keeps erupting regularly, we should beat the 2018 record in the next month or so. So in about a month, we will officially, if Steamboat keeps erupting like this, we will officially beat the 2018 record. So it's definitely going to be interesting seeing how many eruptions will occur in the entire year of 2019. I'm going to say 50. I'm going to say 48 or 50 eruptions for the entire year this year for 2019. That's just a projection. It might be a little lower than that, but we definitely will see it break the record in the next month as long as steamboat doesn't die off knock on wood knock on wood just make it sure but down here we see the 30th eruption of 2019 again only three more are needed to beat the all-time yearly record normal size steamboat eruption we see a burst of eruption right here it seemed to calm down and then there was another burst right here as well normal steamboat guys eruption here it is on the helicopter for ynm in the norse museum so guys, do you think Steamboat's going to break its all-time yearly record? I think it's going to. I think it's going to break it by far. If it keeps erupting regularly for 2019, it's going to be tough to beat the 2019 record when it is achieved. So let's move on. Here we are near the Ridgecrest area. 417 earthquakes of all magnitudes in the past 24 hours. Swarming and aftershocks do still continue in the coastal volcanic field with a big gap right here, which is supposedly where the main magma chamber is located, supposedly. We got swarming ongoing in the coastal volcanic field, then the, so uh, the southeastern part of the coastal volcanic field, and along the Ridgecrest Fault Zone right here. And a little bit of earthquakes down the Garlock Fault as well. So, and we do have another earthquake far to the west right here. My goodness, my son is freaking out yet again. Now, as I showed a few videos ago, down near Ridgecrest, there is a GPS station, CCCC, 
and it did show ongoing uplift primarily in this area right here, but that's what it's showing right here. There are no GPS stations in this area right here. The closest one is far to the north in this area right here, and it did show some uplift as well, but I mainly focused on the CCCC station because it was never turned off, basically. The station up here was turned off and turned back on when the earthquake started to occur, so we still got a good look at how deformation was occurring. Of course, a lot, some really strong horizontal deformation being recorded on the GPS stations here, mainly because these events are strike slip. But it does seem like uplift is still ongoing near the ridge crest and coastal volcanic field area. But I don't know. The, a few of the plots recently have been showing it could be calming down, but it's way too early to tell. Let's wait a few weeks or so to see where the actual trend is heading. And so that's it for right there. Let's zoom out and go to the entire continental United States. I'm going to talk about three earthquakes right now. Uh, okay, so let's talk about this one right up. Very odd, odd location right in, right here. We do see, we did see a tiny, tiny microquake up in Yellowstone, but that's it. Just to the northeast of Riverton, Wyoming, basically right in central Wyoming, we saw a magnitude 2.3 at 6.3 kilometers in depth in a very strange location. Again, there are little teeny tiny faults out in this area, but we rarely see earthquakes occurring in central Wyoming. Surprisingly, one person reported feeling this earthquake. That is very surprising seeing it's a 2.3 at 6.3 kilometers in depth, which occurred at 14.04 UTC on the 30th, of course. Let's look, take a look at that from the closest seismic station possible. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with station K22A in the N4 network, zero, zero location code, broadband vertical. Since it is a broadband channel, I am going to add a one hertz high pass filter enabled to the eighth power. Now, we're going to see right up here we do see the event right here at about 14.04 UTC. It took about 22 seconds or so to arrive on this station. So this station, the closest one available, was a great distance away. In central and eastern Wyoming, they do not have good uh, station coverage at all. But we do see some very high range, oh, whoa. We do see some very high range frequencies associated with this clear P and S wave arrival right there. Go to the spectrogram. Let's see what the highest frequencies are. Let's change the maximum frequency of the spectrogram to 55. It goes all the way up to 50. Basically, no energy goes past, I'm going to say, 32 hertz. Basically, no energy goes past there. So we do see some high-range frequencies, but nothing too, too crazy. Back down to 25. And there we go. That's the magnitude 2.3 at 6. Point, what was it again? Yeah, 2.3 at 6.3 kilometers in depth in central Wyoming, which surprised Surprisingly, one person did feel. Moving on. Down here in central Oklahoma, we do see ongoing swarming. I'm not really going to focus out on uh, about that now, but I did say in my last video, I was putting out a warning for the next week or so, and it's almost the end of, the, of that week. It's getting close to for a larger earthquake. I don't think that larger earthquake is coming anymore. They did, to me, appear like four shocks, but it seemed now, it looks like just a normal sort of swarm sequence. Not saying too normal, but... I'm just saying, it just looks like a swarm instead of a four-shot sequence. Up in Kansas, however, we did see a magnitude 3.1 at 5 kilometers in depth at 929 UTC, July 30, 2019. Over 105 people felt this event. Remember, this is only the people that decided to report feeling an earthquake to USGS. So, people near the epicenter likely did feel very weak, slight shaking. Let's take a look at this earthquake in swarm just real quick. Here in the seismic program swarm, we have station KSU1 in the U.S. network, 00 location code, broadband vertical. Again, since it's a broadband channel, I'm going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power to get rid of those pesky background microseisms on the plots. And we do see right here, a very interesting type of earthquake. Three increases in energy. I doubt these are surface waves right here, so it is very possible two earthquakes occurred at the same exact time. Because even on the spectrogram plot, look at the spectrogram plot. You'd see a clear P wave arrival right there. That looks like the S wave, but what's this right here? A, an additional increase in energy? Usually I would say those are surface waves, but surface waves usually have very low frequencies around 1 hertz or so. Love or Rayleigh waves. Uh, so I don't know. It is very possible that a second earthquake did occur along with this magnitude 3.1, but it was hard to separate, so they didn't report it. I don't know. That's up for you guys to decide, but we do see the magnitude 3.1 and 5 kilometers in depth in Kansas right here. 
dominant frequencies below about 6 hertz or so, but the strongest frequency is at about 1 hertz. Very interesting. Not a low frequency earthquake as you can see by the spectrogram, but we do have some dominant lower frequencies in there as well. Here we are back at earthquake.usgs.gov. See a magnitude 3.4, 5 kilometers in depth in Texas, guys. In Texas, just to the east southeast of Pecos, Texas, which would be south, uh, 34 kilometers south southwest of Mo Monahans, Monahans, Texas. 5 kilometers in depth. Again, magnitude 3.4. At 114 UTC on July 31st. So very recently, which would be, that's, let's, that's about, what would that be? That's about 6, yeah, that's about 6.14 p.m. Pacific time, July 30th, you know, because UTC is about 7 hours ahead of Pacific time. So for their time, I'm going to say it's probably uh, around 8.14 p.m. So just not too long, actually, no, wait, yeah, about 8.14 p.m. So about 2 hours ago, because right now it's 8.16 p.m. Pacific time. July 30th, 2019. Nobody reported feeling this event at all, but we are going to take a look at it in the seismic program swarm just real quick. Here we are back in swarm with data from MNHN in the TX network, 00 location code broadband vertical. Again, since it is a broadband channel, we are going to enable a one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. Earlier in the day, we did see a somewhat local earthquake in Texas, which I believe was not reported. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can obviously tell this is definitely an earthquake with clear P and oh, I actually cannot find the S waves on that. I'll have to take a closer look at that. Very small though. Very, very small. Probably maybe a magnitude 2 at the max. Now scrolling all the way down, right down here, we do see the earthquake and a little aftershock afterwards. Now these right here are not earthquakes. Check this out. Those do not look like earthquakes, do they? Don't know what the heck these are. They almost look like heartbeats on a monitor. Like one of those, uh, what, what do they call it? An EKG? I think that's what they call it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But those look like heartbeats. Isn't that funny? Have no idea what these are. Uh, I don't know. Any suggestions in the uh, comment box below would be amazing. Have no idea. We see another local earthquake right here. But the magnitude 3.4, which nobody felt, was this one right here. Clear P and S wave arrivals. However, we do see some stronger surface waves right here. Check out the dominant frequencies of these. I don't know how these could be surface waves though because frequencies are between 2.2 hertz and 4.5 hertz of these strange waves right here, which would be a third increase in energy, which usually we don't see. P wave would all be all the way back here. Notice that? You see the increase in energy all the way back here. And we clearly see the S wave, unless there were two earthquakes. There could have been two earthquakes at the same time right there. And then later on, we do see a little bit of an aftershock, probably a 1.5 at the max. But that's that for Texas. Just checking to see if anything else occurred while I was recording. Nothing else occurred. So we're going to see Fair on Saturday. Hope it's going to be very, very fun. And we're also going to go see Mount St. Helens next week. That's going to be absolutely amazing as well. Hopefully the weather stays nice. Also, Steamboat Geyser about to break its record three eruptions from now, guys. And remember, if you see a Steamboat eruption, go straight to my Steamboat Geyser 2019 page on my website. I do not immediately make a video about a Steamboat eruption. Sometimes I don't even mention them in some of my videos that I do if they are like a day or two prior to making that video. So if you just want to see the plots and see the information pertaining to any Steamboat Geyser eruption, I always update my website once I see that an eruption has occurred. I mean, that's the if I see an eruption occur on YNM, I do it like that. I do it immediately. So just keep an eye on that. And that's pretty much it for right now. I will be right back soon, maybe tomorrow. And again, check out that uh, blog post about the recent Hawaii earthquakes and the recent Hawaii spasmodic tremor. Uplift continues in Hawaii, of course. Could lead to a volcanic eruption, possibly. I think Mauna Loa will be the next volcano to see volcanic unrest and actual eruption. Don't know when that'll be, but my money's on Mauna Loa for Hawaii, guys. God bless. So you guys had a great day, and enjoy the sun if you can.